I've lost my faith. Hmm. I crossed it with a cross with the theory that Christianity is actually created religion by the Flavians. Who's that? That encapsulates various concepts of Jewish mysticism. <laughs> and I can't help but notice parallels with various esoteric doctrines. Okay. So did you ever attend an Orthodox divine liturgy? Have you ever been to an Orthodox monastery? Have you ever met a spiritual father, a spiritual uh, guide? Have you read the lives of the saints of the Orthodox Church? That's where I would send you. You've got to come into contact with the living, vibrant tradition of the, for 2,000 years, the same Christ, yesterday, today, and forever. If you had an experience of Christ in your head, in a religion, in an idea, in a, in a sense of a religion, sense of an ideology, then of course you're going to lose it, right? Of course you're going to lose it. I mean, I don't know if you ever had it, frankly, because what is faith? Faith is not believing blindly in somebody or something, right? The demons, we said earlier, the demons tremble and believe. Why do they tremble and believe the demons, according to the scriptures? Because they have an experience of who he is. They know experientially that he is the Christ, and they tremble before him. Right there in the scriptures, it says, don't send us before our time and send us into the into the pigs, right? What Are they, are they speaking theoretically, like there's a God in heaven, I believe his existence? No, they were like looking at him face to face. They understood who he was. They understood that, that this was the Messiah and the incarnate Logos. So what is faith but experience? Uh, of, and it's a trust. So there's two, there's two sides or two kinds of faith in the church, right? There's the faith that we confess. There's the symbol of faith. There's the, the reality of life, right? When we say, I believe in one God, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, I believe in the Holy Spirit, I believe in the church, right? What are we, what are we doing? We're saying this is reality. This is truth. This is revelation. We, have, we live it, we understand it, we, we confess it. We're in reality. We're not in delusion. Right? The proud man is in delusion. The humble man is in reality. Right? So, so we're grounded in the truth of things. Right? So that's the first basic faith. You can't have the second kind of faith, trust, without that first, without humbling, submitting on the basis of the eyewitnesses. Like how many people believed because the apostles were eyewitnesses. They didn't have the same experience as the apostles, but they believed because of the witness of the apostles. So, so we live either experientially, you know, directly or over time, but many of us live on the basis of the experience of others. We read the lives of the saints and we say, I believe in Christ because of these saints. This is an amazing and testimony. I believe this testimony. Or others come to us, right? Just like I said, an example, the Samaritan woman, and they came, but then they believed after time through their own experience. So, so, so the, the witness of many, many saints throughout the ages gave us that confession of faith, gave us that reality, right? And we trust and we believe, right? Then we enter into the life of the church. Then we begin to live the life of the church. Then we confess and we repent and we fast and we pray. And little by little, we're healed of that lack of experience. We're healed of that delusion, that pride. We're healed and we overcome, and then we gain trust ourselves because we begin to live and experience and feel and 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 have contact with and have communion with the grace of God, God Himself. And then we turn around and say, I believe because I have experience of what they have told me about, and I believed through them. Now I believe because of my experience. That's the process. So if you don't have that, don't be a don't be upset that you lost it because you because it's not really stable, right? So you got to humble yourself and say, I trust others. I don't know. If you can't say, I don't know, first of all, whoever doesn't say, I don't know, is in delusion, right? That's the first problem. We don't know. Are we serious? Like, we really think we know. It's a joke. We're, it's a joke, right? We don't know anything. We're the most arrogant, the modern people, modernity, people in this day and age are the most arrogant most confused, most heretical of all the ages put together. Anybody who can, any age, any people who can come up with transhumanism is in utter delusion about their own identity as human beings. We don't even have our, our own identity. We don't even know where we're from and what we've been created to do and the purpose of this life. And we have this grand idea that we're going to remake man and, 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 and move on to perfect man. It's just utter, utter delusion. The new age, all this, it's so... We're so proud. We're so proud and arrogant. Okay. So first and foremost, if you want to enter into true knowledge, true experience, the first thing you say is, I don't know. I don't know. 
And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Admit we don't know. I don't know. I therefore have to go to people who do and have shown forth and are celebrated as showing forth and have been there's many, many witnesses to them knowing and tr and and living and experiencing and teaching on the basis of experience. And guess what? Not, they're not alone. There's actually thousands of them that have come before them and say the same thing. And they're all these saints that go back. It's the ignorance we have of our own Christian experience and tradition. We have a tremendous ignorance today. Behind me on the screen, behind me, if you can see it, right behind where the Apostle Peter is, there's huge, massive, huge volumes. Let me get one to show you. This is the great Synaxides T. So let's see if we can get that on the screen. Right there. Look at that. That's one month. That's August. This book is 1,400 pages. That's one month of recorded. It's just the recorded saints. There's thousands of saints that are never recorded. We don't know anything about them. They lived in caves and places, and we don't know anything about them. All right, so. If you were to spend a month of August reading this book, first of all, I don't know if you'd get through it. You got to read like hours each day, probably, right? You would never remain an atheist. You would never be a doubter. You would be blown away by what God has done again and again and again throughout church history. And there's 12 of these volumes. <laughs> and that's just scratching the surface because they don't even include most of the modern saints. This is the witness that nobody knows about. It's the hidden treasure people ignore. They don't have the time and effort they don't spend to, to come to know. Forget all the philosophies and writings of academics and all this stuff. That's not what's important. Do it. Fine. You can find some scraps of truth there. The saints, the lives of the saints, the lives of the true Orthodox Christian saints throughout church. Just read, I mean, just read St. Simeon, Simeon the Stylite. Just read St. Simeon the Younger the Stylite. This is back in the fifth, sixth, seventh century. Just read that. Just read a couple of the stylite lives. People who lived on pillars and what lives they had. They were like angels in the flesh and they worked unbelievable miracles. And people came from all over the empire and the emperor came for their, to be guided by them. And there's so many examples of God working among men and through men in such miraculous ways throughout church history. If you read these and experience these and come to love these men and women who have become uh, gods by grace, you know, Christ in in our day and every age, you can't remain you can't remain a doubter. It's just not possible. But we have so much ignorance, right? We don't take and do due diligence. But we don't know. We just don't know. We've never heard of the cynics artists. We don't even know the existence. And so we just swim in the modern sea of disbelief and confusion. Of course we're gonna be confused. I see on this thing.